Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we are outside with the XK8 and doing something that I've been promising to do for quite some time. So my XK8 Purdy is in a colour called Aquamarine Mica. And as a colour for an XK8, it's pretty out there. It's probably only surpassed in terms of radical and dividing opinion by amaranth, which is a kind of purple, pearlescent colour. And um, in different lights, it looks different colours. Sometimes it looks green, sometimes it looks blue, often it looks sort of turquoise and many shades in between. So one thing that we can be certain of with this unusual colour is there is no circumstances under which it goes well with orange. So following on from losing the ginger caters or side repeaters last time, they're gonna look now at what am I gonna do with the side reflectors. Okay, so we finally get to the changing of this element, the front and rear reflectors. What am I gonna do? We'll show you. How are you gonna do it? I'll show you. So first stage is we need to remove these. I have a UK spec car, so there's no wiring connected to these. The wiring exists inside the car. They can be wired up, um, but there are no lamp holders in these at all. They are different to North American um, reflectors. So step one is just to remove these, compress a metal spring clip at one end or the other, and allow you to pop the other end out. What you need to do is to remove the access panel and hopefully push it out. I'm going to turn the wheels. And yet again, I had a problem when I was changing the side repeaters that they'd been glued in. And I had the same problem with these. Somebody's obviously had a problem with a rattle and has applied a little bit of adhesive. It's not the end of the world, as long as it doesn't damage the paint, we'll all be good. Hmm. Very interesting. The glue has attached the back part of the lens to the body to the extent that as I push it, the front part of the lens is starting to come off. As I want that to happen, just not now, it's not the end of the world either. So I'm guessing I'm gonna get these out and find out the clips are completely broken. Ah, good news, it's not glue, it's some double-sided foam tape, so at least a decent automotive solution that's not going to damage the paint. Okay, so I'm out. So again, if you've got an American spec car, this might be a surprise to you. There's not even a hole for the bulb, so UK reflectors are different. You can obviously modify these, drill them put little notches for the bulb so that it makes the bayonet fitting. But other than that, the same. You see this self-adhesive tape has been applied front and rear, probably to stop a rattle. So, I'm going to the other side and then we'll move on to the backs. Ah, this one comes out quite easily. And it's not got any sticky tape on it. 
I'm marking these up just for my own reference. They are actually the same. Front, right. The rears are exactly the same fitment and should be as easy, if not easier. Just a word to the wise, if like me, you've had your car running, remember you're reaching into the cavity behind uh, here. It's also where the exhaust is. So just be careful of burning your hands. Again, it's exactly the same unit, fronts, rears, lefts and rights. So, some parts of the world, if you're doing this, you're going to pop these out and it'll be a light fitting into the back. Just twist and pull, pop it back there, but some way you can get at it and it's the same job. Okay, so here we are on the bench. We have our reflectors. And as discussed, they've been taken from all four corners, but if I just hold them, or well, three of them proves the point, um, they are identical, so you don't have to worry about handedness, etc. Before we go any further, I always like to look at the numbers on the back. This is the original label, Valio Jaguar, and we can see here 090898, no, sorry, 96. 090896 was when these were labeled and therefore probably manufactured within a day or two. Um, so what am I gonna do? What's my treatment? So there are various options to improve the look around this area. And I've looked hard at them all. And the problem is I think they all have merit, um, depends on your circumstances. I think probably the coolest look of the lot is a delete. So you take these out, you fill the hole, um, and then you do the bodywork, and then you do the respray on the bumper, and you lose them. And they're there because they have to be, they're not a styling feature. So that's the best, but spraying is not gonna be part of my repertoire on this car. Um, it's just too much effort, too much money for the effect. So I'm not gonna go down that, even though I think it's probably the best. You can, Spray these up, so rub these lenses down, spray them up in body colour, and that kind of loses them a little bit and makes them more of a, just a teardrop shaped styling feature. In order to do that reasonably successfully, there's a little bit of text here and here, which might not pick up well on the camera, I'm not sure. So you just have to rub that off with some wet and dry, buff the whole thing up, and then body colour it out. Uh, I think that works really well on some colours of car. Solid colours and the silver, I think it works particularly well on. Um, any of the darker metallics and certainly the mica paints show up at a different colour at different angles. So some of you may have noticed that your nose cone looks fractionally different to the bonnet of your car on a metallic and that's more about the angle where it sits than anything else but these are going to really show up on my rather heavily pearled car it's aquamarine mica so i don't think that was an option for me another one and the one i almost went for uh, is to smoke these out and take them down to a smoky black finish and use tint paint and that's an aerosol applied film, which if these did light up, the color would light through. And you could do that to your indicators as well. 
And certainly if I was going to smoke these out, I would have smoked the clear indicator uh, repeater lamps that I'd put on. Um, but as I really like the look of the clear repeater lamps, what I've decided to do is match it all up and go clear front and rear. And rather than buy the entire units, I've bought oops, lenses. So these are clear lenses to go onto the existing reflector. And these are very, very clear. So we are relying on the fact that inside here is a decent reflective surface in order to give us an interesting look when we finish assembling the whole thing. These are aftermarket. There are no um, raised numberings on here. Uh, they're not e-marked, but as it's not a legal requirement to have an indicator on the side of a car in the UK, that's kind of a moot point. So that's absolutely fine for my, what is gonna be decorative finish. So our first mission is we have to get the lenses off these reflectors. One of the reflectors, which one was it? This one was stuck to the bodywork. And in trying to force it off, it actually started to come away. There we go, that one there. And so that gives us a good one to start with, but is already separate. And this can happen anyway in service and might cause your reflector to fill up with water and tarnish um, the background on it. If it's an illuminated one, then it can cause the bulb to fail. So if you've already got a start, all you want to do is ease it forward. And the lens is actually quite strong. The backing is relatively flexible. So just keep working it, giving it a little wriggle. I'm going towards the camera now. We're also sort of swinging this side to side, very small amount, probably about two or three mil. I can hear the glue breaking up and I can see the gap increasing. There we go. So that's gonna come off very easily. It will be the easiest a lot. There we go. And inside here we find we do have a pretty decent reflector, which is good news. A little bit of dirt on it, but nothing but a quick dust off of a cloth won't resolve. With plastic plated chrome that's old, be careful not to rub it too much. You'll rub the chrome straight off of it really easily. It's usually um, vapor powder deposition means it's just dusted onto the surface and it does come off. So don't go to town on this. Certainly don't use chrome cleaner or anything like that because you'll just clean the chrome off of it. Now we've got this off, we can look at the original equipment's shape and there's a little bit of a recess where it's been glued. Looking at my replacement, I've certainly got that recess, but it's a wider edge. Outer is thicker. And you actually get the sense that this is a thicker unit. The molding is thicker. I'm also, I don't know if you can see this. Placing one on top of the other, this molding is about ooh, a good millimeter and a half to two millimeters wider than the amber part I'm replacing. So I better check that against the car, the recesses in the car, to see what effect that's going to have. So here's our recess. Here's our lens and it is going to make it a snug fit
In fact, I'd say that the back fits fine. But the front is going to look a little wide. Hmm. Or I get the front to fit and the back looks just a little wide. So there may be some fettling to be done. The rears actually fit in really nicely. The lenses are all the same, it's just the, the recess is slightly different. Okay, so some marginal fettling to be done. The back units actually fit really nicely into the lens, completely flush. And there is a nice chromey effect going on there. But you probably get a better idea of what I mean by the thickness here. If you look at that surround, Okay, so this one, this is sitting on top of the light fitting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this up and then linish the edges just to allow me to go a little deeper into the recess. Basically take the sharp edge off with a belt sander probably just to go in that little bit further. Next step, try and get rid of the glue. The original stuff seems quite brittle and just snaps off. No problem at all. A little bit of soft cloth. And basically, as soon as I've got the dust off, stop. There's a little recess down there where the lamp should go if this was a illuminated unit it's a bit dull i think that's actually never been chromed properly so what i'm going to do got a bit of silver wheels shake it up a little And once you sprayed a little bit into the lid, you use a paintbrush to apply some in the base of there. Don't have to be perfect because it's mostly going to be obscured. You just want it to look bright. Much better. Now at this stage I could obviously install lighting inside these won't be very difficult, um, but equally it's not a difficult job to do later. So I'm going to leave well alone because I don't need that and we'll see how we go. The one that was glued in, you can see has got different clips. I don't think the clips I've got here are original. If they are, they're certainly bent where they shouldn't be. So I'm going to have to reshape those. Oh, 
much better. Just going to use a Stanley knife blade to remove the last bits of glue. Sorry, Stanley is a brand name, isn't it? This, what is this? Box knife, let's call it. Utility knife. Give it a little second dab of the silver. Okay, next thing is going to be putting the fronts on. And I said I've got some fettling to do on the lens, but my intention is to do that after I've assembled it to make it more rigid. I'm going to use this stuff. Okay, not sponsored or saying this is the very best. But what you do want is something reasonably fast setting, something that's absolutely clear because you're going to be able to see the glue through this lens. So if anything, uh, if you use uh, contact adhesive, for instance, Evo stick, it dries yellowy green and you'll see that as a stripe around here forever. So it's got to be absolutely clear. And I'm using the Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel because the gel version just has a little bit more body to it, a little bit more thickness. It's got a little bit of rubber in, in it, which means it's flexible. And um, the trouble with super glues is they do tend to be very brittle. I don't think this would ever um, come apart because of brittleness, but I am going to be playing around with it afterwards. I'm going to linish the edges of the uh, reflectors. So having a flexible glue that's not going to break is probably a good idea. Shake and tap with cap on bottle, turn upside down, shake vigorously and tap on a hard surface to shake gel into your nozzle. Apply a small amount of Gorilla Glue gel to one surface, one drop per square inch is recommended. Excess glue or surface gaps cause delayed or failed bond. Press the two surfaces together for 10 to 45 seconds and 24 hours for a full cure. After use, clean nozzle with a dry cloth. Right. So let's have a little go on this first one. Let's see what we get. Now the fact that it says one drop per square inch Makes me think it's not going to be good for a continuous bead. But let's have a little look. So, shake well. And I mean, shook quite well. Tap to get the glue down into the nozzle. You don't have to pierce the nozzle because it's got a pin in it. And I'm going to apply the glue to the very outer edge, the corner almost, of this base. And I don't even know if you can see what I'm applying on camera because I'm basically just wetting the corner. Okay. I think that's got some all of the way around. The lid on the glue. So put that back in. Down. Be absolutely sure there's nothing in there because it ain't coming back off necessarily. And we're going to place the lens into position.
quickly flip it over. Yep, it's all nice and flush. Give it a push down. Turn it back the other way so that any excess goes down and away from the reflector, not into the lens. And I'm going to leave that to one side. Whilst we see if we can get the lids off the others. This one seems less uh, inclined to fall off, so I'm going to follow a tip from one of our subscribers and just squeeze gently on the plastic using a vice, I mean very gently, just to change the shape of the flimsier bit and hope the stiff bit, the reflector, stays the same shape and doesn't move. So kind of holding it in the vice and twisting it a little bit. Seems to have given me just enough movement. So I could hear some of the glue letting go. Probably very easy if you just go for it, but being a bit protective. Possibly over cautious. Yeah, it's definitely started to come away. So now I should be able to just get plastic trim tool in there and ease it back. As is always the way with these things, I think I've kind of perfected the technique as I'm on the last one. So this is what seems to be working best. There's a bit of a blade there in the side of my voice. I'm squeezing that. I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing until you hit a pop. Because you know where that's popped. It popped it near that blade. And if you take it out at this stage, Everything kind of springs back and nothing's happened. So you pop it back in and you go again, squeeze it up till you hear a little bit of creaking noises. There we go. And now what I'm doing is just turning it backwards and forwards towards us, making air all the crunching. And I'm going again a little bit tighter. And you can hear it crunching. And a little bit tighter still. And a little bit tighter still. And at this stage you can start to see a gap appearing just here. So I, I'm pulling back on the lens now and the whole thing just comes off because this is distorted it no longer wants to hold on to it it just kind of flakes off really easily so clean and off in one but only on the last one
And the last bit of the equation is going to be just linish in the edges. So I put my finger sander in the vise. I'm going to use this surface, which is coming this way. So it's coming towards me. I'm going to put the lens on this way so it's pushing away and not going to clip the edge and try and rip it off. And we're just going to put a little flat on the point around the edge here. Try and give you an impression of how little I've taken off. This is the one still got the burrs on from linishing, and that's the one where I haven't. And just look at the thickness of that clear flange. And on that, I've probably taken half a mil off. And it's just going to make it fit in the hole a lot nicer. Pretty superfluous as a job for any normal human being, I think. But I like it. So for me this is extra entertainment. An extra play value that I've obtained from these lenses. So I'm just taking the burr off. If you draw the blade of a knife probably leaning back towards you at about 15 degrees so it can't dig in it's really good for deburring plastic and scraping off excess N not 15 degrees cut back towards like you're whittling dragging the blade as if you know literally on my skin I can do that if I went the other way I'd cut my hand off that's the way I'm doing it on a plastic There we go. If you have the wired up version of these, then I'd strongly recommend putting a little bit of bathroom sealant on this back face on the grey and then just spreading it with your finger or a spatula into the tiny gap between the lens and the plastic. In doing so, you seal it up and prevent water getting in and corroding the connections on the lamp inside. If like mine, it's just a reflector, then if moisture gets in, it's not really an issue. Um, so that's kind of ready to go back on. Let's go and have a look. And this is the one where I fixed the clips on. Didn't come from this location, actually came from the other side. But, uh, we're going to see if this goes in nice and, and tight this time. There is a little notch in the bumper that this notch here locates in. Just stops you putting it upside down. Oh, brilliant. It's just snapped into position. Very neatly.
very happy. Well, once again, I'm really impressed with the look of these mods. I think they've achieved what I want. They've just cleaned things up. I don't really want modern. I just want, want it to look attractive in a way that I think the car should have looked from new. The orange reflectors were always a compromise to making one car for the world rather than a different one for the UK and North America. And I think the clear reflectors keep the car as it should be, but they're a lot subtler. Opinion of the product? Nobody could accuse them of being cheap. And they've got a very aftermarket look and feel about them in that I had to do fettling to make them fit properly, which I don't mind, you know, that for me that's just part of the fun. But certainly if you want to take them out of the packet and fit them, there's quite a lot of faffing around to do. And they are a little clearer than ideal. I think they should be a little bit more diamond cut or whatever you want to call it on the inside to obscure the interior. But I'm really picking now. You know, that's, that's a good looking finish. And the note of caution is even using the super glue gel, they are very clear on the edges. So you're gonna see any glue you apply. So be very neat, be very careful and only use things that are completely clear. Right, it goes well with the repeaters. That time I gave Purdy a bit of a clean, I think. Right guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed this little episode of To The Garage. If you have, then please tell your friends, share, like, subscribe uh, make comments if you want to go over to the website it's at www.tothegarage.co.uk where we have an ever-growing selection of printed materials handbooks technical guides workshop manuals for the xk8 xkr x100 where you'll find more links to things like olive the t2 project and Betsy the T4, which is next door. And you can also purchase hats, stickers, and support the channel in that way. There's never gonna be a charge at any time to watch any of the videos. So, see you soon, bye. <laughs>